Hey, what's up guys? It's the Sports Blitz here and we're back with our NFL Week 12 Power Rankings. I know this is a little bit later than I normally do them. Um, it's been a really busy day. Didn't get around to recording it last night either, so there's a reason for that. Um, but let's go ahead and jump on into them. So starting off with 32, I'm going to go ahead and leave Jacksonville here. Um, they were 32 last week and they were on a bye, so I don't really see any reason to not keep them at 32. So yeah, we're gonna, gonna leave them there. Number 31, I'm actually gonna put the Giants down here. Um, they they were getting shut out against the Bucks for most of the game. Um, and really just that that team looked even more helpless than it did with Daniel Jones. And, I mean, I know it's Tommy DeVito. You shouldn't have real high expectations there anyways. But, I mean, I don't think Malik Neighbors even had a target until, like, the second half. So, you know, even if you're down big, you at least got to give your main guy a shot, you know. See if, see if he can make something happen. So, yeah, they not, they're, they're not looking good. Um, at number 30, I'm going to go ahead and have the Raiders right here. Um, I thought they played the Broncos pretty tough, honestly. Um, but I mean, ultimately couldn't pull it out. Bo Nix kind of started pulling ahead later on in the game and it was just too much for the Raiders. So <clears throat> Only down one spot from last week. And really, had the Cowboys not beaten a really good team in the Commanders and gone up, I probably would have left the Raiders where they're at. Because so I didn't think it was that embarrassing of a loss. But the Cowboys played really well against the Commanders. Um, I know they had a kick return touchdown. I believe they had a defensive touchdown as well. I could be mistaken on that, but yeah, I believe they had a defensive touchdown too. Um, so yeah, Cowboys played well. Um, trying to decide if I want to move them up. You know, yeah, I'll move them above the Jets too. I'll move them. I'll move them to twenty-eight. Move the Jets twenty-nine. Jets were on their bye. Not really liking what I'm seeing from the Jets. I think I think there's going to be more firings that happen, that happen over there. And I don't think it's going to end up looking any better during the season at all. Um, another thing is with the, the situation going on around Aaron Rodgers, there being rumors of him potentially getting benched, maybe even cut, you know, rumors of him not wanting to play there in 2025. You could see the Jets honestly end up being in the sweepstakes for a quarterback. Um, maybe a guy like Cam Ward. Um, I know a lot of teams have Shador Sanders as their number one guy. I have Cam Ward as my number one guy. <clears throat> um, I mean, I also like Quinn Ewers. I think he's solid. Um, there's, there, there, there's some solid quarterbacks out there, so you could potentially see the Jets and the sweepstakes there, but we're not here to mock draft today. We're here to do power rankings, and I think the Jets are probably right around that 29 range, so got them at 29. Like I mentioned with the Cowboys, they had a really good win against the Commanders, up three spots to 28, um... I, I don't I don't feel confident enough to say that they're gonna keep it up though. So um at number twenty seven, I've got the Patriots here. Um they're dropping down after getting beaten pretty bad um against the Dolphins. I mean that wasn't really even a close game. Um Later on in the game, the Patriots scored a little bit to kind of kind of make it seem like it wasn't as big of a beating as it was, but it was pretty bad. 
it was pretty bad. Um, so, yeah, I don't really know what's going on there for New England. Um, not really loving Gerard Mayo's answers. I think most of you guys know what I'm talking about with um, him saying, you know, once they're on the field, there's nothing I can do for them. You don't want to hear that from a coach. All right. I, I don't like that at all. You don't want to hear that from a coach. So, yeah, we got them at 27. Honestly, if things keep going like that, I could see them dropping even further. So, this bottom tier is just atrocious. Um, at number 26, <clears throat> I think, let's see. So the Browns and Titans both won this week. Saints were on a bye. You know, I think I'm going to I think I'm going to have the Browns right here. Um I know Browns fans are going to be like, "Well, we beat the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, divisional game and everything." I'm like, that's exactly it though. It's a divisional game. It got really snowy. Um, a lot of other factors coming into that game. Um, divisional games can go either way, like any given year. I mean, honestly, I've seen divisional games go in directions that a bottom five team has ended up playing a top five team and ended up winning. That's how divisional games are. Um, I don't think this means the Browns are a good team. So, keeping them here at 26, they are out of the, you know, bottom basement tier, so that's good, but keeping them here. Um, at number 25, I've got the Titans here. They got a surprising win over the Texans. Um, I was very impressed, actually, with Will Levis. I want to say he completed his first, like, 11 passes and was just lethal at first. Um, after that, he made a couple mistakes here and there. But, I mean, he's a second-year quarterback. you got to expect that. Um, so, really, like, as long as you can keep seeing growth from Will Levis, Titans should be in a good spot going forward. You just you want to continue to see that growth from there. <clears throat> so, that was good. Um, kind of an embarrassing loss for the Texans, if you ask me. I thought C.J. Stroud... Honestly, C.J. Stroud's been bad lately. I mean, not just that game. Like, these last few. Um, it, it hasn't been pretty. So, it's kind of an embarrassing loss for the Texans. But, yeah, I got the Titans here up one spot. Um... I'd like to see if, if Will Levis keeps that up and, you know, continues to play like that. So, um, then we have at 24, uh, we have the Carolina Panthers. Um, I'm not moving them up or down. I thought they actually played really, really well against the Chiefs. Um, I mean... Had to be a game-winning field goal for the Chiefs. Um, you know, took them all the way to the end. And really, the Panthers were down 20-9 to at halftime. And came back, and really in the, sec in the second half, in the second half of that game, the Panthers were playing like the better team. So, that's why, like, after a loss like this... I'm not really going to drop them, but I'm also, it's kind of hard to put, you know, put them up a spot or two, you know, with a loss. So, um, 23, got the Saints. Um, I'm actually going to just leave these next three the exact same. Saints were on a bye. Can't really say much there. Um, Bears here at 22. I thought they played really tough against the Vikings. Um, I don't think that was an embarrassing loss at all. I think Caleb Williams looked a lot better. 
Honestly, I think he's started to look a lot better since Thomas Brown has been calling the plays. So that's been um, that's been good for him. Uh, 21. Um, Colts are playing the Lions. That's a really tough game. Honestly, honestly, the Colts stayed in that game better than I expected them to. And honestly, probably better than a lot of people expected them to. I know the ending score was 24 to 6. I was honestly expecting at least 40 points scored on the Colts. Um, so, I mean, holding the Lions to 24, given what they've done this season, I'd, I'd say that's enough to, you know, kind of keep their spot in the power rankings this, this week. So, then for the Bengals, they were on a bye, so... Not going to move them down at all here. Um, at number 19. Let's see. Honestly, I'm going to move the 49ers all the way down here to 19. Um, I don't know what they're doing. Lately, like, obviously Brock Purdy didn't play in this game, so that was, you know, kind of a big factor too. But, I mean, they got absolutely shellacked by the Packers. 38-10. to 10. Look, with or without Brock Purdy, the Niners were going to lose that game. They're not the same team they were last year. Um, it seems like they can't get McCaffrey going. Um... The offensive line is not looking good. Defense is really not looking good. 49ers are just not looking good at all right now. So, got them here at number 19. Um, at number 18, I've actually got the Atlanta Falcons. And, look, I know they were on a bye. This is technically down one spot from last week. If it'll move. Come on. There we go. Um, yeah, I know this is down one spot from last week, and they were on a bye. This is just because, really, I thought the Bucks and Dolphins both played really, really well this week. And I thought they kind of deserved to, you know, get a boost over the Falcons. And really, like, you look at the last couple weeks for the Falcons as well, they haven't looked real great anyways, so... Having teams below them getting wins, I think it's enough to, you know, move the Falcons down a spot in favor of, you know, the Dolphins and Bucks. Um, at number 17, you know what? I'm actually going to put the Texans right here. Um, I know this seems like a big drop for... Uh, what are the Texans right now? Seven and four? Something like that. But anyways, it just doesn't seem like they've been playing real great lately. Um, their defense, I feel like... It, it, in, in some spots, I think their defense has gotten quite a bit better. But they've kind of <coughs> they've kind of been inconsistent, too. I mean, they didn't look real good against Will Levis, specifically. But they looked really good against Dallas. Um, and they kind of had to make up for, you know, C.J. Stroud not playing well that game. Um, I don't think the play calling for the Texans has been great lately. It Honestly, it's kind of just been the Joe Mixon show. It's kind of, if Joe Mixon has a good game, Texans are probably going to end up winning. If he doesn't, they're probably going to end up losing. That's how it was against the Titans. Joe Mixon didn't really have a big game, and, well, the Texans lost. So, yeah, I, I don't think they're really quite as good as I thought they were going to be this year. So I've got them here at 17. Number 16, I've got the Dolphins. Um, this is up, I think, three spots. I think I had them at 19 coming into this week. 
Um, they, they, they just kind of beat the crap out of the Patriots. That's really all I have to say about it. They, they shellacked him. Um, I will say the Dolphins offense is very weird. You know, seeing, seeing John O. Smith and Devon A. Chan being the guys, you know, controlling the passing game instead of Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell is really weird. And I know Jalen Waddell had a really, really big game this week. So, look, I'm not stupid on that. But look at, like, any other week. Jalen Waddell really hasn't gotten super involved. So, yeah, again, he had a really big, big week against the Patriots. But most weeks, he really hasn't done much. So, that offense has just been weird this year. I think because they've not really gotten Waddle and Hill involved, it's kind of looked a little less explosive at times. Um, I think if they do that, it'd look really good. But regardless, they beat them really, really good. I think they're going to continue to rise on the power rankings. Number 15, you got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers right here. Um... I mean, total beating on the Giants. And I know that's not saying much because it's the Giants. They're, you know, again, in the power rankings, bottom two team right now. So they're real bad. Honestly, I could see arguments for putting them at 32. So wasn't exactly a good team they beat, but it was an absolute beating that they put on them. So, you know, I'm going to give them credit for that. Um, at 14, I'm going to, I'm going to have the Rams, if this will, there we go, I'm going to have the Rams, I think this is the same position I had them at last week, um, Saquon ran all over them, like, insane game from Saquon, um, I mean, None of the Eagles' offense even had to do anything because Saquon was all over them like that. Um, but honestly, I mean, I, I think they're kind of staying in the thick of it with, you know, in the NFC West. I think they're a good team still. And I think they're going to find some more wins this season. So keeping them there at 14, still kind of like middle of the road, NFL team right now you could argue putting them down a little bit more but I think 14 is pretty realistic um number 13 got the Seattle Seahawks um they got a good win over the Cardinals um and I mean like looking at it too you could place a very very real argument either way of putting, sorry, I don't know why this tier list is always so laggy for me. Um, you you could find an argument either way of putting Seahawks ahead of Cardinals. Um, look, I think as a whole, I believe the Cardinals are the better team. I know they played each other this Sunday. That doesn't always show which one's the actual better team. Okay, that, that, that's, that's not how every game works. Um, but they are tied for first um, in the NFC West. I think they're both really good teams. Um, but I, I, I think I'm still giving the Cardinals the slight edge. Especially because it was only one game after winning four straight. So... I got the Cardinals here at 12. At 11, we've got Washington Commanders. Um, they have not looked real great lately. Um, literally just a few weeks ago, they were at my number five team. They've really been declining quite a bit. Um, I think this is 
three straight losses for them, if I'm not mistaken. Because, yeah, they lost to the Cowboys, and then they lost to the Eagles. I don't remember who they played before that. But, yeah, they're not looking real good lately. Um, when you lose against the Cowboys with Cooper Rush at quarterback, that's that's not great. That's not great. So, got them outside of the top 10 now, and I think that's pretty fair. So, number 10, let's see. Number 10, I think I'll go with the Chargers. Um, I didn't want to drop them this much because, I mean, in that Chargers-Ravens game, I didn't think it was quite as bad of a game as the score showed. I didn't think the Ravens were that much better that the score showed. Um, I know that the Chargers kind of came and got a touchdown, you know, in, in <clears throat> what you could probably call garbage time. Um, really, in the first half, they were right there with the Ravens, and then the Ravens kind of pulled ahead later on, but Chargers didn't have J.K. Dobbins at all in that second half. Um, I will say the one really big worry I had there was um, the Chargers O-line kind of started to fall apart a little bit. They were allowing Herbert to get sacked. They were holding multiple times. Um, I mean, even Joe Alt was getting ran over. Um so their, their, their O-line was not looking real good for that. Um, and then their, their defense kind of seemed to... Honestly, their defense kind of seemed tired. Um, didn't really want to put in quite as much effort, in my opinion, late in the game. Um, that was kind of just what I noticed. I think they'll be fine going forward. I really do. I think they're a good team. But for right now, I think 10 is a pretty good spot for the Chargers. Um, number 9, I've got the Denver Broncos. I believe this is up four spots from last week. Um, I know they only beat the Raiders, but Bo Nix has been incredible lately. Their defense is really, really good. They've just been putting together good games. You know, like th these last few weeks... You take out that Ravens game, and the Broncos have been one of the best teams in the NFL last few weeks. So, got them number here. Got them here at number nine. Um, I think that's a pretty solid spot for them. Number eight, I've got the Pittsburgh Steelers going down three spots after losing the Browns. Um, I mean. You just you just can't have that type of loss to both a divisional rival and a divisional rival that was coming into the game I think two and eight, I think it was. I mean you just you just can't afford to do that. Um I think the Steelers are gonna be fine. They're a good team. They're still, I think they're leading their division right now still. If not, they're probably neck and neck with the Ravens. They're, they're going to be fine. All right. Steelers are a good team. But they, they, ha they, ha they had a rough game. All right. Every team has it. So, yeah. Have the Steelers here at number eight. Number seven, got the Green Bay Packers. Um... They, like I said, they absolutely shellacked the 49ers. I think this is up four spots from last week. Um, I expected, let's see, I'm trying to remember if I predicted Green Bay to win or not. Um, I feel like looking back, I probably did, but I don't know for sure. Let me hurry and check my my picks from last week and see. I did not have a very good week for picks this last week, by the way. 
I ended up six and seven. So not great. Not great. Um, on the season, though, I'm 113 and 66, by the way, in case any of you were, were curious. Um, I I did pick the 49ers for some reason. Um, I'm guessing it had something to do with, like, knowing George Kittle was going to be back. And I will say this. At the time of making my picks, I didn't know that Brock Purdy was going to miss that game. So, there's my defense for that. Didn't know Brock Purdy was going to miss it. But, Brock Purdy missing doesn't uh, doesn't throw away the fact that the Packers scored 38 on the 49ers. Um, like, I mean, Pur- Purdy isn't preventing the Packers from scoring 38. So, they were the better team, very clearly. Was wrong about that pick. I, again, I don't know why I picked that. But, anyways, Packers looked good. Got them here at 7. Um, I think they were a good team. Um, at number 6, I've got a decision to make between these top 6. Well, really... Really, I'm just saying three through six right here. I I've still got my number one and two cemented. Spoiler alert. Um, but number three through six, I've kind of got a decision to make. Um. Look, I'm gonna be blatantly honest here I think the Vikings have struggled lately I do um Sam Darnold has not really looked like MVP Darnold these last few weeks he hasn't looked atrocious except for the Jacksonville game that was a bad game we can all agree on that but outside of that game he hasn't looked atrocious but I don't think he has really looked like MVP Sam Darnold. Um, which is fine. I mean, for a, player like, for a player like that, you shouldn't expect him to play like MVP every game. But I was worried about the Vikings' defense. They seem to be slipping a little bit. Um, I thought they let the Bears score way too much on them. I thought they let Caleb Williams have his way way too much. Um, And honestly, I expected Brian Flores, Flores, whatever, to, you know, dial up better pressure against him. Um, Really, I I just thought the Vikings defense was going to be better. And I know this is down two spots, and it's kind of a mixture of them not looking as good lately and these other two teams ahead of them looking really good lately. So that's just my opinion. Number five, I got the Chiefs. I know they beat the Panthers this week. They had a win. But let's be honest, like on paper coming into this week, the Chiefs should not have allowed that type of game from the Panthers. Bryce Young looked incredible out there. Um, There were very few throws watching that game that um, Bryce really, like, missed. Um, Even with pressure in his face. Because I will say the Chiefs were dialing up a lot of blitzes and Bryce just Bryce was getting hit hard on a few of them too and it wasn't phasing him. He was making really good throws and look the Chiefs defense kind of got exposed a little bit. Um and also against a Panthers defense like that, you'd kind of ex- you'd kind of expect the Chiefs to score 
high 30s to even in the 40s um, because of how bad that defense has been. So I think that's got to be kind of embarrassing for a lot of Chiefs fans. Um, I've kind of seen on social media kind of the fan base split. I've seen some some people being like, yeah, we beat the Panthers. You know, they were all talking this, you know, thing saying they were going to give us a losing streak and whatever. You know, we beat them. And I'm like, true, you did. But should have beat them by a lot more on paper. Um, and I've seen a lot of Chiefs fans admitting like, hey, that was kind of an embarrassing win. Like, I don't feel as good about that anymore, you know? I don't feel as good. Like, for a win, I don't feel great about that. So, yeah, a lot of Chiefs fans are split on that. I think, given the type of win it was, it's like, look, it still looks good for your record. But, again, for, for, for what it was and expectations... They should have won by a lot more. So, number four, I think I'm going to go with the Baltimore Ravens. Um, they've been really good lately. Offense has been looking real good. Defensively, I think they've still got some holes in the secondary. Um, Tredavious White seems to be very, very handsy. Um, drawing up a lot of flags, um, and isn't, isn't looking real great there. So their secondary is struggling, but I mean, really like playing a hot chargers team right there without Roquan Smith, I thought the Ravens played really well. So got them up here at number four, um, really good game. Got the Eagles here at number three. They've been absolutely lethal lately. Saquon Barkley has got to be in the MVP conversation. As of right now, honestly, I I don't think there's really anyone obvious, obvious enough to take MVP from Saquon. I mean, he has been absolutely filthy this season. Um... And really particular, these last, what, like four, five, six weeks, I mean, I think they've got a real star there, and I think Saquon should genuinely be considered for MVP. I really do. Um, but then, as I mentioned before, got the Bills at two, got the Lions at one, until really any losses or anything big start to happen, that's probably going to remain the same. I mean, I think that's how most most power rankings are. Don't really need to explain that. So let me know what you thought of these power rankings in the comments section below. Again, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Later.